Hi everyone, Sandra here from the Chauvin's Nest. Today I'm bringing you a few farmhouse coastal decor DIYs. For this first project, I'm using a 12 by 16 canvas that I picked up at Dollarama. It's been in my stash for a while and I printed off a map of the lake where our cottage is. It printed off in four different pieces because I needed to have the large size, but that's okay. I'm just gonna cut down those squares and fit them on top of the canvas. I'm going to use matte Mod Podge to glue the paper onto the canvas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a layer of Mod Podge on the canvas. I'm gonna make sure that I get a fairly thick amount and then I'll just lay the paper on and try to work out as many air bubbles as I can. I covered the whole piece with a layer of Mod Podge and let it dry completely. You can still see some of the bubbles and the creases in it, but I wanted to leave it that way because I want it to look more weathered and old. I'm taking some sandpaper and I'm going to rough up the edges and I'm also going to take it across the papers themselves and get a little bit of some wear and tear on them. To make this seem even more of an old map, I'm going to use some of the bare dark wax and I'm just going to use a cloth and wipe some on and then wipe it off. And I'm going to do a little bit extra around the edges where you can see the white canvas and make that a little bit more distressed as well. I wanted to show where our cottage is on the map, so I'm just taking a black permanent marker and I'm just gonna make a little dot of where our cottage is located. I decided I wanted to frame it out, so I'm using these leftover pieces of shim that I had used on a different project, and these are the pieces that were left. So I'm going to just use my craft knife and cut them down to size, and then hot glue them around the edge of the canvas. Once I finished off the first row, I decided to put a second row of shims all the way around just to give it a little bit of a thicker wood look. This next project is super easy. I picked up this little paddle at a thrift store and it has a fish jumping out of the water. That's what's sort of embellished on there, but it also had some writing on it. So I painted white and blue stripes on it just to cover up that and to add a little bit of color to it. What I'm doing now is just sanding down some of the finish on the wood part because I wanna use some antiquing wax and I want it to stick well because it's a really shiny surface. Using a soft cloth and bare antiquing wax in the color dark, which is like a brown color, I'm just gonna go over it and do it as many times as I need to get the color that I want. I'm also putting it on the paint because that will really make it look old and weathered. Thank you. 
you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, another paddle. But yes, I found this one for $2.99 and it's much bigger and it has the hooks on it. So I thought it was a really neat find. It was only $2.99. But this design that someone painted on it, I'm sure back in the day, it would have been really cool. It's dated June 20th, 2003. And whoever painted this did a really beautiful job, but it's not my style. So I'm sanding it down to make sure that any of the bumps from the paint are nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna give it a coat of Rust-Oleum charcoal paint. The paddle is going to get one coat of paint and then I'm going to probably do some distressing with it. I don't have to worry about getting a really good coverage, although chalk paint is great for coverage. And I'm just using a really cheap dollar store brush. There's a bunch of different ways that you can distress, but my favorite is just using a dry brush technique. I use a really rough brush. This one's from the dollar store and it has been used a lot. So it's really chunky at the edges and it doesn't give a smooth finish at all anymore. I dip it into my paint. I dab it off into this little bowl and then I just start brushing over in the direction of wood grain on my piece. And I just keep working it until I get the look I want. I decided to do something different with the hooks on that big paddle. Instead of using it to hang towels or to hang jackets or hats or anything like that, I'm actually just gonna make it a decorative piece. So I had this sign left over from the fall and it actually had three other pieces of wood on it. I just cut that off because I really only wanted the two. I'm taking Serenity Blue and putting on two coats because I want to be able to cover up those letters. I'm going to be using some stencils to put the name of our lake on this sign. These stencils are from a local dollar store, Dollarama, and I believe they were $1.25. So I'm not going to be using my stippling brush or my stencil brush for this because I the letters are going to be too close together. What I'm going to do is use painter's tape to give myself a straight line and then I'm going to use my pencil and just outline the letters. I have two sizes of these paint pens. One is a fine tip, which is what I'm using now, and the other one is called a chisel tip, which is more like a thick permanent marker. I'm just gonna outline the letters and then just color them in. Really simple to do. I used lowercase letters for the word lake, and then I used the uppercase letters for the word Mazinaw. On our lake, we have a pair of loons that live there year round. They're the same pair every year and every spring they have one or two little babies and we always enjoy listening to them. I found a picture of a loon online and I did a little practice drawing. If you can see up in the right hand corner, it's just a little pencil outline. And now I'm just going to repeat that on the sign and then I'll fill it in with my CraftSmart paint pen. I wanted to give this sign a little bit of distressing too, but this time I'm using the gray paint and I'm gonna do my same dry brush technique, dip it, dab some off, and then just run my brush across. I did get a little bit too much on the word lake and that's an easy fix. I'm just gonna take a little rag and wipe some of it off.
this is the finished look. I added this little nautical wreath and some extra nautical rope tied in a knot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and share my video. Subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell to get notified when I upload new content. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for more nautical decor as I finish my farmhouse coastal decor family room makeover.